Hello everybody. This is the third lecture in the Flight Dynamics and Control series. Uh, we will begin looking today at the equations of motions on a mechanical oscillator. So let's begin. So we have our airplane right here. I'll try to draw another airplane. Hopefully I get good at this by the end. So there's our tail. Looks better. And we have our wings right here. Our back guy right there. Okay. So here's our center of mass right here. What are the forces on a plane? Well, we're just going to be pretty simple right now. We have our lift. We have our weight. We have our drag. And we have our thrust. So that's pretty simple. So before we actually begin deriving the equations of motion for the aircraft, it's a lot easier to look at it in a more simple way. That is we're going to look at it as a spring. Well, it seems kind of weird, but just hear me out. So, let's say our airplane's flying along. We'll draw a little, another little airplane right here. So it's moving along this way. And it pitches up. So when, our, when we increase our angle of attack, we're going to go up. And as you increase your angle of attack, you're going to slow down. And as you slow down, you're going to eventually pitch down. So our airplane starts to do some, has some oscillating motion right here. So as the airplane pitches up, it goes up. And as it goes up, it slows down. And once it slows down, it pitches down. And then it increases its speed. And then it pitches back up. And then etc. etc. It goes up, down, up, down. And it kind of oscillates, as you see right here. So this kind of looks like a spring right here. You know? So it's going up and down, and it never it takes a while to get here. So it acts a lot like a, a mechanical oscillator with a damper. Okay, so we will begin to derive our equations of motion with a spring for now, because it's significantly easier once we start adding thetas in there. Things get uh, complicated pretty quickly. So just for good practice, we will uh, try to derive the equations of motion for a mechanical oscillator. So. A simplified version of that aircraft would look kind of like this. So we have a box with mass M. Actually, I want to draw the mass M outside. So it has a mass of an M. Here's the center of gravity. So we have this force applied in the downwards direction. And then let's say we have a ceiling right here. And we have it's attached to a spring. And then we have this damper force right here. Also called a dash bot. So we're, let's begin by deriving an equation of motion for this particular case. So we're going to ask ourselves, how does x of t evolve due to applied forces? And some initial conditions as well such as displacement and velocity. Such as displacement and velocity. Okay, let's look at a spring real quick. So we have a spring right here. This is just review if you don't know what, how a spring works. So our spring right here, we'll call this value right here x naught. So the spring is in equilibrium right now. And as we know, spring has a k, uh, spring constant of k. So by Hooke's law, we know that the force on the spring is equal to negative k, lowercase k, times the displacement it has, or delta x. And the negative sign is caused by restoring force. So if we push the spring this way, to our right is going to cause a force. It's going to go into the negative x direction, and that's going to result in a positive force pushing it back here. Likewise, if we pull the string past here into a positive delta x or positive x position or x position larger than x naught, it's going to have a negative force. It's going to try to pull it back to the equilibrium point. Oh, let's move that up right there. So next. We'll just kind of let's look at some springs and some other uh, applications as well. So we have 
let's just say we have a bar right here and see how we can use springs or see how everything is kind of like a spring so let's say we have a bar right here and this bar has a diameter of D and we're gonna apply a force P and then it's gonna there'll be a small delta that we're gonna move this now I didn't draw that to scale it's not gonna move it's gonna move a really small amount so let's recall from some mechan our mechanics course that the strain of of this bar is equivalent to the stress over the modulus or the shear or Young's modulus okay so we can rewrite that this strain strain is the ratio between the displacement over the entire length so we know that e or epsilon is equal to the displacement over the length of the bar so I guess this will be L right here that's the length okay so next we have our stress we know our stress is equal to it's just our force over the area so that's just a definition of force right there so if we substitute both of these into this equation right here we end up with something that looks like this we have our delta over L or displacement over our length is equal to some force this is a force P which is applied right there is equal to P over our Young's modulus times the area of the bar okay let's rearrange for our force which is P so we know that P is equal to EA over L times Delta okay and now does this look let me grab it so these two things should start to look a little familiar right here so we have our, our spring force right here is equal to de minus K times Delta X let's look at this one right here this guy so our force which is P is equal to some constant look at that right there this is just some constant based on some materials of the spring or of this uh, bar right here so these don't change at all it's a constant and then we're instead of a delta X we just have a regular delta so in a sense this bar acts a lot like a spring if we were to push it back and forth or just hit it once or twice so that's one way that's another way to look at a spring Let's see next we have torsional springs so you will find that an airplane the back of the airplane or the rear of the airplane acts a lot like a torsional spring a torsional spring is a, it's the same thing as a regular spring except it's with moments instead of a force so a torsional spring let's just say we have another bar right here on the wall and then it has there's some sp torsional spring thingy right here and it's, it displaces instead of in this direction going back and forth it's going to displace by a delta and it turns out that this moment force is equal to we have guessed it k of a uh, spring constant of theta sub theta times the theta or the displacement in theta that's a torsional spring and we will find out that let's just draw an airplane right here and we'll kind of relate the two together so this is our horizontal line and we'll have an airplane try to draw one so here's our airplane there we go and then it's going in this direction right here we have this theta now there's gonna be forces We'll have a force here, and it turns out that this force caused by the elevator makes this airplane uh, move a lot in this direction right here. And it turns out that this acts a lot like this mechanical torsion spring. So I hope I convinced you that we can apply these equations of motion. We can apply them as just regular springs and dash pots, which are just act is another fancy name for da uh, dampers. Hope oh, we can convince you that that it, it works in a simplified way. Now, eventually, once we derive it with springs, we can replace k or the spring constant or whatnot. We can replace them with actual aerodynamic forces, and we can get a, actual results. But for now, we're just going to start off with the basic result or the basic spring.
Uh, let's just go to the new page. Okay, now let's just go over the dash pot a little bit, or damper, I should say. So damper or dash pot. So what is a damper slash dash pot? Well, it's pretty self, once you see a picture, you'll understand exactly what it is. So we just have this housing right here, and then we have this plunger looking thing, and it comes straight out. And let's just shade this in so you can see clearly. Shed a different color. And all it is, is it's just a fancy word for it. It just takes energy away by this thing goes in and out. And it just causes resistance based on the velocity. So in much the same way a spring works, actually the equations look almost identical for it. So the damping force caused by this moving in and out is uh, much like the uh, force on a spring is equal to some constant C times X velocity or the velocity. X dot is another fancy name for D or dx dt which is also equal to negative c times the velocity. So this is just some measured damping constant. So now we can begin to derive actually it's been a while let's go grab the sheet of our initial this is our initial picture right there. So let's begin to drive the uh, equation of motion for this particular free body diagram, which is just a basic spring with a dash pot attached to it with an applied force down to the bottom. So we have Newton's first law. We know that F equals MA. Now let's just sum up all the forces. So the sum of the forces is equal to, now let's just sum the forces. So we have the gravitational force of the thing. Now we have the force due, or the force of, uh, from the, uh, excuse me, the applied force. And then we have the spring force. And that is equal to the delta, which is x minus x naught minus, and we have the damper pot force, or dash pot. Where did I get damper? Oh, I just combined the two together. So it's equal to c x dot minus x not dot and that has to be equal to mass times acceleration which another word for that is x double dot there we go now we have the sum of the forces in the vertical direction in the vertical sense so let's just further reduce our equation so we have mg plus f of t now it turns out if we move our coordinate system in a way, we can actually eliminate this x, these not right here, like the these guys. So if we just move our system or our coordinate system down, we can get rid of these. So it turns out as just kx minus c double x equals mx dot dot. Now let's combine all the x's on one side. So we have mg plus f of t minus kx minus cx dot minus mx double dot. Okay. So now let's move the force in the, uh, let's move these guys on the, to the other side. So now we end up with some, and then we can divide by uh, negative one, and then it turns out we get mg plus f of t equals kx plus cx dot plus mx double dot. It's starting to look a lot like a differential equation now. And then we can just go ahead and divide the entire thing by the mass. So we end up with g plus f of t over m is equal to k over m times x plus cx dot plus x dot dot. And there we go. What we have here is a second order linear differential equation. 
uh, next time we will begin to look at different methods to actually begin to solve these things and get something useful out of it. So thank you very much. That concludes this episode or this tutorial. My name is Silas. Have a great day.